Hi guys, Dane here, and today I am doing the get to know the writer tag. Uh, there are 10 questions to this. Uh, I wasn't tagged, but I saw this on Jay Shea's channel, and I thought, well, why not do a little bit more author tubey stuff, you know? So, um, he did try and track down the original. It came onto BookTube via a Blogspot blog. And so there are a lot of steps along the way, so I haven't documented them all. I've just linked to Jay Sh uh, Shea's video because I'm very lazy, so sorry about that. We're going to go ahead and jump right on in. Oh, there are only 10 questions. I think I said there were 11. Oops. Okay, question one. At what time of day do you usually write? Whenever I'm awake, um, I just sort of write on and off throughout the day. Now, I do, I'm do. i self-employed as a freelance writer as well, so there's not really like any off time, basically during the day I'll do like 15 minutes of my own stuff which will include, you know, catching up on my emails and stuff, um, writing whatever my work in progress is and uh, like tidying the house and making food and stuff. So I do 15 minutes of that and then I do 30 minutes of work. Uh, and then in the evenings I usually switch to 15 minutes of that, 15 of work, 15 of booktube and repeat until I'm all caught up on booktube stuff like videos and editing. And then I just sort of go from there it depends if I've got lots of work on I'll do more work and other times I'll do more me stuff but um, yeah because of that I'm genuine generally like chipping away at stuff just constantly throughout the day biggest tails here he's been very cute he's come to sit by us hello bigs question number two do you outline your work or just wing it um, I'm a plotter I guess I always have a plot don't oi I'm filming there don't go there I always have a plot uh, in mind going in so I, I normally start with the idea and then I start taking notes and fleshing that out and building from there. Uh, and then I've always got like a bunch of novels that are kind of plotted out and ready to write that I can just pick up and run with, you know? So then I always just choose which project I'm gonna move to next. Um, having said that, stuff does change as I go along. So I'm currently like 70,000 words into the latest, into novel number three in the Lightfold series. And I don't really know how it's gonna end. Although a big twist has just happened that I didn't plan. So this is kind of the problem that I have is that I slowly veer off the plan until we get towards the end and it's just the plan's over here and I'm over there. It's like how with Game of Thrones, the TV show and the books slowly moved apart until stuff that worked in the TV show just wouldn't work in the books because people were on the wrong continent and stuff. Question number three, what author, in brackets, zzz, do you admire the most? Well, I guess it's all of the ones that I like the most. I mean, Stephen King, just for his consistency and his output, I think even a, a bad Stephen King novel is still better than most. And actually, that's what all the, my favourite authors have in common, where even their bad books are still better than most other authors. Um, I know, obviously, people will say he had his glory days in the 70s and whatnot, but the fact that he's still going now, is still putting out books, I think is just inspiring. Uh, Agatha Christie as well. Um, she's just a big influence just because she's one of my favourite authors in general. But... Um, also, she saw herself more as like a housewife first and an author second, which I think is really tragic because she's, I think she's the world's best-selling novelist of all time. So it's kind of mad that she saw herself as a housewife first and a novelist second. I mean, imagine what she could have done if she considered herself a novelist first, Christ. Um, uh, Terry Pratchett as well, I just think he was, just seemed like a genuinely nice guy and um, you know, the way he died was quite sad as well, but even the way that he faced that, he faced it with humour and I just think that was an inspiration. Um, and also his books are great. They'll have to do you for now. Question number four, what's your least favourite genre to write or read? Okay, well, it's probably romance for both of them. Um, I'm just not, I am quite romantic, so there is that. But I'm just, I, I don't care about other people's sex lives and their romance lives and their love lives and all that shit. Like, when I used to work in an office, my nightmare was just people would gather around the water cooler as they did. And, like, everyone would just be talking about who slept with who and, like, how people's marriages are doing and stuff. And I'm like, I don't care. It's none of my business anyway. And also, I find it very dull. So... Like, when a, a book is just purely romance, I, I tend to, like, I, I can't really get involved, uh, in, um, invested in it. Having said that, romance does work well occasionally when it's accompanied with other stuff. And I really like, uh, I heard someone once say that romance and horror are the only two genres that can kind of slip into other genres without just taking over it. So like a western, if you put western elements in a book, it becomes a western, you know? Uh, and like sci-fi and fantasy, like fantasy elements arguably make a book... A fantasy book you know <laughs> whereas horror and romance I think are the two where you know you can read a fantasy novel with horror in it or a fantasy with romance in it and so I think those two quite uh, kind of stand out like that 
uh, I'm just a horror person more than a romance person, but I have no ill feeling towards people who read it or write it, you know? Um, but again, writing, for the, writing it for the same reason that I just would struggle to get really interested in it. Um, I've written erotica, funnily enough, and my erotica was all right. I, I quite like doing that, um, mainly because I'm very specific with erotica as well, so it's like certain words. You just can't use certain words. Like, his sex and her sex is one. You can't... Don't do that. It just... It just sounds stupid, mate, and erect throbbing member and all of this stuff. It's just like, no, just be like... He, he whipped his cock out of his trousers or something. I don't know. <laughs> Question number five, do you want writing to be a hobby or is your goal to write full time? Well, I sort of do write full time, but sort of not. So I used to work in marketing, right? And my goal then was to go full time as a writer, essentially as like a freelancer and whatnot, which I then managed to do. And I appreciate I'm very lucky for being able to sort of do what I love. But then the ultimate goal now would be to make enough essentially passive income to not have to freelance uh, and that's through like a variety of stuff like I've got some shares and some cryptocurrency that can potentially increase in value uh, selling books on eBay and stuff like that um, although again I don't want it to become a full-time job so it's still just kind of a hobby at the moment uh, and also I guess that's not indefinite but things like I don't know like I get some money from YouTube and Quora some from book royalties which is the main one um, yeah it would be nice even to get to a point where I can live on my royalties and stuff alone um, and then can freelance if I want to, to get a bit of extra money and stuff. So I guess that's the goal now. And then after that, the goal is to buy a house, pay the house off, and that's basically my retirement plan. Then I just write in that house until I die, you know? But I write what I want to write, and not what other people pay me to. Question number six, what's the hardest part of writing for you? Ooh, that's a solid question, and I don't know. Ooh, um... It's always, I think probably it is the last 20,000 words of any given book. It doesn't matter what the subject matter is, it doesn't matter the genre, it can be non-fiction. I mean, I guess poetry doesn't really count because it would be fewer words, but then it'd be like the last 50 po poems or something. Well, probably less, last 20 to 30 poems or something. Uh, that's the hardest bit because you're so close to the finish line, but obviously when I start out a book, I tend to write a lot more of it and then I slow down as time goes on. Um, which is one of the reasons why like meat took so long and like this lightfold book I think for about 40 to 50,000 words I was averaging a thousand words a day and then the next 20,000 words it probably took me two months so you know question number seven do you have a writing routine mate I don't have any routine well actually you know that's, that's a lie I have lots of routines but not v okay <laughs> So I have a bad sleep routine, um, I mean, and again, I do have a routine going to bed, so I get into bed and I do my Duolingo on my phone uh, with Red Dwarf on my laptop, and then I'm reading a book at the same time, so yeah, I know that is like three things at once. I multitask, I get stressed out if I single task, sorry. Um, then I've been doing some, like, some stoic meditation before bed recently, uh, which I think has been helping, I don't know if it's been helping me to sleep, but it's been helping me in my overall life anyway. Um, and yeah, then I just sleep whenever I can sleep. Normally it takes me forever. I wake up in the mornings and I get up and start work. And then that's when I start in those 45 minute loop things that I mentioned. So I guess I do have a writing routine. It's just deeply unhealthy. Oh, and then at the end of every 45 minutes, I generally have a cigarette and read my book for a bit and then go back. Question number eight, what's your solution to writer's block? You just gotta keep writing, man. You just gotta dedicate the time. Like, if you dedicate the time to sitting in front of the keyboard and painfully bashing away at it until things appear on the screen, you'll finish and you'll get through the block, you know. I mean, it might be shit, but then that's something that you deal with during the editing rounds, so it's fine. And, uh, and also, I think, like, you gotta remember, not every part of your novel is gonna be gold. Like, even the best novelists, there are parts of their books that people don't enjoy, and I'm sure that the writers themselves didn't particularly enjoy, but were necessary for the story, so... You just gotta power through, like, the same as you would do if you were in a reading slump, which I don't really get. I, I read more or less at certain times, but... Again, be, I guess because I go for a cigarette every 45 minutes, and I take my book out, so that's how I read so much. <laughs> Makes you worry about the state of my lungs, though, doesn't it? Question number nine, how long have you had a writing blog? Well, oh, well I, we, I guess we can interpret this in different ways. I mean, I've had websites for years, my first, my first few, well I made one in Microsoft front page in IT at school when I was 14, so that would be 2003. Uh, and then when I was at college, 
I had some uh, PHP BB forums. I actually used to specialize in editing. So I used to specialize in running those forums and actually made some, like I was 15 or whatever, 16, 17, making all right money as a freelancer through just all the PHP BB support forums because people would have problems installing themes and I'll be like, well, I'll do that if you pay me, PayPal me 20 quid and stuff. Um, so I used to do that quite a lot and I almost got into web development and then didn't at the last minute uh, and decided to study creative writing as well because it was my passion, whereas web development was like the sensible choice. But yeah, I also had a website called photoshoppool.com where one of my friends at college, it was like a, a photo challenge that we had, so we used to put pictures of Paul up and then basically challenge each other, but also throw it open to the general public to photoshop Paul. And like, so we had him like riding sharks and stuff and we had like challenges and all this stuff. So we had that for a while. Uh, and then like danecobain.com I've had for a while on and off for various different things. Uh, socialbookshelves.com is my book blog. I've had that since 2013. I've had this YouTube channel since 2006, but only really seriously started creating content. Well, in my early 20s, I did a lot of Let's Plays and stuff and then kind of veered away from that because I wanted to focus on the writing and stuff. You know, I was doing what I thought would be get views rather than what I thought I wanted to do. Um, and I've been kind of seriously creating booktube stuff for probably about three years now. And question number 10, do you think having a writing blog has helped your writing in any way? Uh, having all the websites and booktube and all this stuff has definitely helped, not my writing necessarily, but the marketing side of things. Uh, my first book deal actually came through socialbookshelves.com, my book blog, because Jesse James Freeman, who was the vice president of community management at Booktrope, um, he saw my blog, sent me some of their books, and then he let me know their submissions were open. I submitted and the rest is history, so you know. Um, I've had some freelance work coming through Booktube specifically as well. So both uh, Jason White from Jason's Weird Reads and Charles Heathcote from Charles Heathcote. Um, they've both hired me as an editor as well, um, which has been great. That's the only kind of freelance stuff that I would do in, a, in an ideal world. It would be like ghostwriting and editing only. Um, and obviously maybe stuff at the art center. And even then I'd just phase it down and I'd like stop, a pro you know, it'd be nice to get to a point where I can stop applying for stuff. And I just take on projects from people I know when they approach me and ask me to, to help, you know? So yeah, those are the questions. I'm gonna tag some author tubers here. So I'm gonna tag Jason of Jason's Weird Reads and Charles from Charlie Heathcote. I'm gonna tag Todd from Todd the Librarian because he's a, a writer. Madman Reads and Rocks as well. Uh, I don't know if he does tags, but it would be interesting to hear his, hear his answers. Edward Lorne, uh, E. Who else can we tag? Emma Rosen Books. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I don't know, that's all I can think of for now, but that's a good enough uh, list to get going. So there we have it, that's what I made of the get to know the writer tag. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments. Let me know uh, your answers to these questions or if you're planning to do this uh, tag and all that kind of stuff. And uh, hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.